Ah, Packard Bell. Pretty much the Dell of the mid-90s. They were very common. They did have several missteps that eventually led to them becoming almost irrelevant, at least in the United States. The system we have here is a fairly beaten up multimedia R515. As you can see what I mean by beaten up, it's missing some bezels near the bottom. Which features a Pentium at 200 megahertz and 32 megabytes of RAM from the factory. It also has a 3 gigabyte hard drive. We can see that the full model is A950-TWR and we can see that there's two USB ports. One of them I actually had to remove a piece of metal to get to which was a bit weird. And then you got your PS2 mouse and keyboard connections, your dual serial ports, parallel port, and onboard video out, and the sound card breakout and the modem. Removing the back case is pretty easy, there's just three screws that you gotta undo and then slide it. And then these side things come off pretty easily, with just undoing a, one screw each. And then they slide off as well. Looking inside, one of the first things you're bound to notice is this absolutely beautiful bluish green heatsink that's cooling our processor. And our video is the S3 Trio 64 V2-DX, which has 2 megabytes of onboard memory, and it has a solder pad for a video expansion slot. And we do have 32 megabytes of RAM in this system, upgradable to I believe 128 megabytes, and we have 2 IDE channels and 1 floppy channel. And connected to one of our IDE channels we have this 3 GB Seagate hard drive. And look at all that beautiful circuitry on the back. And here in the ISA slot we have the single lone expansion card, which is our modem, which looks very well built. Now you probably notice this big ribbon cable here, and that goes to the sound card breakout board. Which if you look closely, you can see it has this wire running across it, which is very strange. Taking out the very, very strange riser card, we can see that we are missing a couple of slots that we could have had. Including another PCI slot and another ISA slot. But we do have three ISA slots and two PCI slots available for upgrading. I don't really like how these wires are just sort of shoved under there. They're sort of crunched to get through there, and it just doesn't seem good. And we have a lovely legend that tells you all the jumpers on the computer. You can tell that computers were a lot more complicated in terms of their numbers of parts back in the day. And there's our award BIOS chip, which is the 586 Triton chip. This thing also has these ridiculous heat sinks on these MOSFETs. That's enough looking inside, let's get this thing powered up. First thing you notice is the floppy drive seek test. Ah, uh, the i430VX chipset. Wonder where I've heard that before. As you can see we're running Windows 95, specifically OSR2 with the plus pack installed. Now Windows 95, as you know, is not very good for modern things such as web browsing. In fact, I don't even have a network card in here, but Internet Explorer 5.5 lacks support for most of the modern web. This computer has an aftermarket DVD drive that works astonishingly well, and obviously is capable of doing op normal optical drive activities. Needless to say, I had to replace it. And once I did, I tried playing a DVD. That went absolutely beautifully well, as you can see by this lovely pink screen. And then once I actually did get the video to play, as you can see there was a lot of artifacting going on and it ran at about one frame per second. And when you manage to freeze up the operating system, which happened a lot, you got to deal with scan disk.
Evidently this machine has been plagued by the webby desktop update as you can see by our drive information which is broken. Now I did add a five and a quarter inch floppy drive to this computer which I really do like and I don't really use it for much but it is cool to stick the discs in there and read them and all that stuff. And now my bootable five and a quarter inch disc seems to have died. So instead all I'm going to do is read this data from this MS-DOS installation diskette just to prove that it works. And indeed it does. As you can see it loaded all of the files. And like any computer from this era, it has a three and a half inch floppy diskette drive which does work, as you can see, I'm able to install the Microsoft Entertainment Pack just fine from my diskette. And of course, it does do some lighter gaming, as it has no extreme graphics in it. We are limited to lighter and older games, such as Chip's Challenge, that comes from the Microsoft Be Best of Entertainment Pack. Also from the Best of Entertainment pack is one of my other favorites, Jazz Ball. And of course, being designed to run on a 386 or something, it runs just fine on this 200 MHz Pentium. One of my other favorites is the Microsoft Pinball Arcade. And if I'm talking about pinball, of course I have to mention Space Cadet Pinball. You all probably know it from shipping with Windows operating systems, as it did with Microsoft Windows 95 Plus Pack and Windows Millennium Edition, as well as 2000 and XP. However, this is the full version of the game, called Full Tilt's Pinball, which supports higher resolutions and has a different artwork, but otherwise the gameplay is mostly the same. It also includes two other tables in the pack. Now trying to run any, any newer, more intense games on this computer generally doesn't go well. As you can see, I'm trying to start Hard Truck 2, but which is by no means a new or extremely demanding game, but even so, it is too much for this poor old computer. And if you didn't know, this computer does have an AT power supply, which means that you shut it down, you have to press the button for it to turn off because that is a switch that is directly connected to the line voltage. For some reason, this computer seems slower than it has any right to. My Windows 95 laptop with 16 megabytes of memory and a 133 megahertz Pentium outperforms this at basically anything. However, that doesn't mean this one is useless. In conclusion, this system is a nice little system to have. Even though it's slower than it has any right to be, it's still pretty cool to use and is an interesting to experiment with. If you like this video and would like to see more of this content, please make sure to leave a like and a subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment if you do have one. That's it for this time, catch you in the next video.